I've heard a lot of things today. I appreciate every bit of what I've heard. I appreciate you all offering us your candor and your honesty. And I'd ask that you bear with me for a couple more minutes of questioning. I want to talk about the SIVs, the planning, the operations as we've done in large. When I think about planning, I think about you come up with an objective that you want to meet. And after you have an objective that you want, you come up with a strategy and tactics by which you think you're going to accomplish that objective. And then you do something really important. You practice it. So you can see what goes right and what goes wrong. How things play out when the metal hits the meat, as they say. Let me start with a broad question. Uh, Colonel Crummer, to your knowledge, what level of practice took place? This is a very general question to the whole of the, the withdrawal. To your knowledge, what level of practice took place? There was no time when the order was given to start withdrawing. When the announcement came out on the 14th of April, 1 May, we saw water rolling, basically being sucked down the drain from all those ad stations in Afghanistan were coming back to do an extraordinarily difficult task. There was no time to be able to go through a full rehearsal. It had to happen now. So let me ask some of the specifics on this. Was it then not practiced? If a, a suicide bomber a person, a vehicle-borne IED, something else, went off at one of the, the access points? Units have that already baked into what they do for their battle drills, for their standing operating procedures. One of the reasons the speed was so important with the withdrawal from a planning perspective was to try to limit the exposure area for our service members that would be, frankly, vulnerable during the time period of withdrawal. The reason I ask about practice for that, uh, Sergeant Major, you brought up that you were looking at the level of services that were available at Bagram versus H. Kaya. And you mentioned that the, the level of service there was maybe a level two hospital. In your opinion, did it matter that it was a level two me medical facility and not a level three medical facility? Sir, if uh, one of my soldiers were to get wounded, I would want a level three there. Um, Why? For the greater life-saving ability. Let me ask some more planning and practice questions. Was it ever practiced that there would be thousands evacuated on civilian flights that pulled cash out of their wallets? and flew halfway around the world to get people out of what was effectively a still a, a standing war zone, Colonel Crumrin? No. Was it practiced that an airfield could be overrun by a thousand people? No, not in this situation. To anybody's knowledge? Or overrun by 10,000 people? Sir, I can speak on the behalf, uh, on the behalf of Bagram. Um, that was practiced okay. on Bagram. That, that, that was a scenario that was exercised continually. Uh, we, we and you offered analysis based on you practiced this at Bagram, but what with H. Kaya? So I don't know. I, I, I am not privy to, uh, to what happened at H. Kaya. I was not there. But I can say that uh, these contingencies were very well rehearsed and planned for in Bagram. How many airstrips at Bagram? How many runways? There are two main runways that you can take off from that I am aware of. Was it practice that they may be down to one runway at H. Kaya? I don't know that it was. There's a lot of these questions that we can ask about what was practiced, what was planned for, what was prepared for. and. As I think about the, the hundreds of those that I can ask, largely the answer comes back to it wasn't thought about, whether it was because there wasn't given the time to think about it, or if somebody thought about it, somebody didn't want to hear about it. They wanted, maybe they wanted a plausible deniability. I won't pretend to 
put myself into somebody else's mind. But there was a, a willful ignorance that took place with this withdrawal. Cost the lives of service members. It looked like you had a comment on that before I finish up. I'm happy to hear you out, Mr. Cromer or Mr. Colonel. I thought I saw your heads go up. You know, it appeared to me as though there was a willful ignorance. I think the facts bear that out. And I can't say anything more than what my colleagues have already said on this. Other than that, it cost unnecessarily the lives of our service members, and it leaves those that are still serving and those that are still mourning with the question of what has changed. And I can't come away after several hours of questioning with you all and tell them this is what has changed. This is who learned the lesson and who would say, yes, I would absolutely do that differently. And that's not what I want to be left with. That's all I can say on that for now. In that, I'm going to 